Thank you for joining Hawaii Wellness Network, and I'm very excited to have a special guest here, um, Lonnie Kwan. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. You are. Yes, great. And <laughs> we are going to talk about one a, a hot topic, and I'm in my 40s, so this is a, a you do you do life coaching, you do all kinds of different things, but one of the recent workshops I'd love to dive into because when I got the email, I was actually very excited. Mm -hmm. so, so this is such a conversation of people really wanting to get this right about relationships. So you it, want to talk it really about is the shift that's happened in the world, as all of you know and all of you have felt. We are not just seeking a partner or a husband or wife. We are seeking soulmates. And we're at an evolution in our in humanity where we each person has worked through our karma. And that's part of the reason it can be really challenging. Sometimes, you know, we can get down on ourselves and sometimes we take on other people's stuff, family members or friends no. who mean well. No, no. No, no. I mean, when they turn the holidays we're all thinking about that. I know. I, you know, when you're at a party and they're like, You're still not married, you know? <laughs> yeah. But one thing that I've recognized working with people i've been a coach for eight years i coach people through life transitions and one thing i've recognized is that timing just like ann was saying in the previous show um, is really key and oftentimes it's divine timing and often we need to learn things in this lifetime we are here for a purpose besides just you know loving another person and so there are times when it's necessary for us to fulfill other obligations first in our career in our family of origin in ourselves in our own growth before we're really ready to connect with a soulmate and so i'm so excited i um read this book last year and was instantly drawn in it's called calling in the one and it's a bestseller uh, by Catherine Woodward Thomas. She's a relationship expert. She's been interviewed on Today Show and um, she really comes from a place of heart-centered um, counseling for people. And her book is about clearing away any obstacles that have held you back from loving. And not just loving another person, but loving yourself. And that's why this book is so powerful and why I decided to teach this class. It's a nine week class um, meeting every Sunday. And it just really, it touched me deeply. I recommend it to all my clients and friends. So and do, you, do you ask people to read the book first or that you, they can go to your They'll workshop? read it, yeah, they'll read it concurrently. They can also read it ahead of time. As you know, any book that has that type of depth the more often you read it, you find something new and meaningful in it. So it really, it's worth reading ahead of time. And, and if my class sounds like something that resonates for you, then definitely you can read it a second time. And it's nice because it's weekly, because then you can actually yes. get the information and then put, do a little bit of practice and yes, I'm so excited. and then have a chance to be able to ask questions and come back. The exercises that she has are really, um, they're creative. They there's some written exercises, there are artistic exercises, there are things that, you know, help you to dig deep into the past, and then once you've done that and cleared that out of the way, it's about present, what's important to you now, and future, what do you envision for your ideal relationship and for your ideal life, which is in alignment with what I do in my other workshops. A lot of people are talking about, and this is happening to me, is the old relationships from like 10 years ago, 15 yes. years ago, and they're calling you out of the blue. Yes. And, it, and it's you know tempting to go backwards, but you've changed and they've changed. Yes. So after doing that twice, it, and, <laughs> and it's been interesting, um, yeah, I've learned that that's probably not the best thing to do, but I know a lot of people are going through that. It offers a, an opportunity for complete resolution and release of that old karma. So um, as you know, everything happens for a reason. And when people from our past come back, it's because either we or they haven't resolved something. And if we've resolved our stuff and we're fine, that's okay, you know. But we might also consider, out of the kindness of our hearts, helping them resolve their stuff, as long as it doesn't bring up more stuff for us. And I think for women in particular, and I'm sure, the other women in this room recognize this, we tend to overgive. And then we become resentful if we don't get what we think is an equal exchange. 
but that's shifting and that's changing. Men are much more aware of their feminine sides than they've ever been in the history of humankind. Women are stepping into our masculine energy and we're becoming whole. Both men and women are becoming whole and we're becoming um, capable of having the deep and loving relationships that, you know, that we're, we're born to have. That's great. We're really here to have. It must be really exciting to see everybody starting and then do the nine weeks and be able to see them afterwards. It is. I just started the first set of classes and even after the first week, it's been amazing. And having read the book once through myself and now reading it through a second time with this group, it's really been personally powerful as a coach as well um, to know I feel a responsibility and I feel a real sacred duty and a call to service to really support people because some of the things that come up can be very painful and so it's really it's just really um, important to me to hold a safe space where people feel heard where they feel anything they share will be held in confidence and where they know they're loved. Right. And I think a, a, a ma it's very interesting, even when I watch my friends, they break up with one relationship, oh, you know, it didn't work, and you know, and you get to hear about it for a while, and then they introduce you to the next one, exactly the same. So a it's lot like, okay. <laughs> if they don't resolve their own personal stuff, that often happens, will get into uh, disempowering relationship patterns because we haven't resolved stuff that we need to look at, especially with family of origin and maybe even karmic ties. And we were talking a little bit about that before we started, that sometimes there's a, a purpose for the crappy relationships we have. Right. Um, even though they're, they're difficult and painful, they develop us spiritually, they provide us an opportunity to learn how to forgive and how to love ourselves which of course is why we're here. Isn't it, and sometimes the, they come in to help prepare us for the, because yes. if we met the right one before then, we wouldn't be ready. And it's interesting so it's because we can change. You know, sometimes people ask me, is there more than one soulmate? And I can honestly answer yes. Um, sometimes in the course of this particular lifetime, we may grow in such a way that we are no longer a match for the person who was our original soulmate, our first wife or husband. And we find that, you know, if you can make a harmonious break, it can actually be a really positive thing for both people. And I do speak from my own experience. I have, um, I was married for 19 years, 18 of them really harmoniously and happily. Um, we divorced last year, we're still best friends. And we worked, not to say we didn't have stuff, because we did, but we worked through it. And, um, you know, I realized, too, that it's not always possible to do the work that we're here to do sometimes with a particular partner. And sometimes we're called, um, and, and sometimes it's a difficult call, when you start to realize that you no longer support each other's visions or dreams the way, the way they need to be supported. And it takes courage. So, you know, when people come to my workshops, not just this one, but the other workshops that I offer about setting your intention and visualizing your goals and basically um, creating the life you want, what's really important is that people understand it takes an effort, it takes courage, and it also takes faith, a belief that it really, that you have the power to change your own life, that you you know, even though we are here and things happen to us, we always have the power to make meaning of it and to um, connect with others who are aligned with the work we're doing, as you know. Yeah, so you can work with an executive maybe, you know, yeah. wanting to focus on our career and kind of stuck or yeah. someone that's having challenges with um, a co-workers or just communicating, just, you know, pretty much any issues. So. I've worked with people in all different walks of life, all backgrounds, all income levels. I've worked with students, I've worked with retirees, I've worked with um, with executives, I've worked with people who are teachers, people who are mothers and fathers, um, every every type of transition you can think of. And um, I feel really grateful for the work I do. I came to it um, 
sort of circuitously. I've sort of been a coach my entire life. I'm one of those people that people come to for advice. Yeah, and you feel I, like a sister. Yeah, yeah and it, it's sort of a, you know, it, it's a blessing and a curse. Um, when I was younger, I didn't, I didn't realize that that was unusual, that strangers would come up to me and um, tell me their life story. And I always honored it. I always, um, I wanted to help them. I didn't always know how to help them. But I later realized I'm not here to help everyone, of course, but I'm also not responsible for everyone. It, they're responsible. And so I know as a coach that the power is within each person, that it's not about me fixing them or anything like that. It's really about harnessing the tools and resources when they're ready and willing to change their own lives and to create their own dream for the future and you know going into 2013 we've talked yes. about all the changes from last year yeah. and people are shifting so you know yeah. a lot of people are a little confused and feeling different and have been in a, maybe a marriage or a career and now they want to change and mm -hmm. they're a little bit confused on this all of a sudden feeling so mm -hmm. I think it would be helpful to go to workshops and, and figure that all out I'd be honored to to have them come if that feels right to you um, I'm advertising of course yeah, in Hawaii Wellness I'm sense. so excited and I've been advertising with Hawaii Wellness for um, a couple of years now yeah. and thank you again um, I just added this workshop I'm I have a new book coming out um, that I've been working on for five years and Great. it feels a little bit like giving a baby that's way overdue yes <laughs> <laughs> Giving birth to this baby so it's like please <laughs> push yeah I'm really I'm just so excited so it'll be out maybe in the spring or summer it's coming out in March oh good you, you set your intention for the date and you're going to make it happen. Yes, and I, I've been really fortunate to have a writer's group to bounce ideas off of and um, and some other collaborators, some people who've offered um, feedback and endorsements and um, just insight into how to make it even better. And I really feel that this is the wave of the future, that it's more about we than me it's more about collaboration and cooperation than competition. Um, the name of my company, Creating Co-Powerment, came to me in a dream. And it really is about that form of energy that's coming about in the world, where we realize we're interdependent. We're not codependent. We're not independent, although we are to a degree. We are responsible individually. But we're interdependent, and we really need one another to make this world a better place because um, that's why we're here. We're here to love, we're here to learn. Do you want to share the topic or the title of your book? Yes, it's called The Creating Copowerment Workbook and it's stories of transition, transformation, and transcendence. So it, it's an actual workbook that you can, mm -hmm. oh that's great. Yeah, it's based on the workshops that I've done and, and I've been really fortunate several of my clients have generously offered to share their stories. Yes. Um, so it's almost like a journal to write down do exercises in. Yes, there are exercises and practices and explorations. There are also stories. But the other piece that I feel is important, there's, a, there's over 30 years of scientific psychological research into areas of happiness, love, connection, altruism, um, success. There's research that has been done and so I really draw upon the research that's already been done by authors such as um, Martin E.P. Seligman, um, Caroline Miller, uh, Kristen Neff, and um, Martha Beck and others out there who've done research in these areas to bolster things that many of us already know that we really can't do it alone alone I mean, we are responsible for our peace and how we connect with others in the right way at the right time is what creates um, the highest benefit for all concerned. I have those friends that they struggle, 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 and then I find out and I'm like, why didn't you ask me why? You know, they, yeah. They're too embarrassed to ask. Right, and prideful, taught. and they're like, I didn't even think. Right. Because I've you know, i been on my own and, and struggling all this time. I didn't yeah. think to ask to borrow that or ask for a ride or do something. So exactly. I think that uh, people are opening up a little bit more to that. I agree, and I think in the West there's this mindset, this sort of John Wayne <laughs> mindset, and we need to shift that. It's time, you know, the East, the Eastern philosophies, we've been really fortunate that meditation and yoga and other practices have come, and that's not an accident. It's because we're balancing the yin with the yang, we're balancing both. 
and we're starting to realize that uh, this do it alone attitude me before you attitude is causing tremendous destruction and it's unnecessary it's got to be about we oh i think we're all tired of trying, trying to do everything tired. ourselves yes and and it's so I'm it's so that. much easier when you ask somebody and they're delighted i know i'm delighted to help when someone asks me other people i've asked when i finally get the courage to ask are honored and thrilled to to offer their expertise and their and their their service their gift and i think a lot of people now are feeling more comfortable about saying i can't do that but here i have a couple suggestions or i can do part of it and that's okay whereas before they you know you felt guilty for saying no exactly. and not honoring yourself so it's it's okay to start asking and, and if they say no or uh, you know, change it around. That's exactly that. right. And and also the expectation with which you ask. You know, if you go in with the intention of it being open and knowing that the need will be met one way or the other and not demanding, you know. Um, and I think a lot of body, mind, spirit practitioners, and I'm sure many of you watching and many of you in this room feel this way. When you're of service, you almost feel like you have to give it away for free. And that is not true. It dishonors everyone and it causes dissonance. Um, what I've found for myself, and each person does it differently, but for myself, when I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with a person, I do it on a sliding scale based on their income so that it honors whatever background they're from. People going through transition by nature are a little anxious about their financial situation. So I really honor where people are coming from um, and what their background is. And I think that's probably what the future is going to be more like. Right. People offering things in exchange as well. I've done some exchanges with other practitioners in the past. Um, you know, there are always creative ways to offer what we do and to do it in a way that's loving and honest and has integrity and, and works for everyone. And you can even do that in the beginning, but then when they get through their blockages, they're gonna have financial abundance, so it's not gonna be a problem once mm -hmm. you get that unstuck. Mm -hmm. so that's usually when they stop working with me because they don't need that mm -hmm. service, and that's that's fine. I'm totally, I'm a, I'm a short-term coach. Cool. Some coaches do years and years and years, but I work best with people who are going through a transition that lasts maybe three t three months to a year. Um, I've worked with one client here in Hawaii who came to me for a year, and that was necessary with her particular situation. Um, but most people within six months, they have a clear sense using the tools that I've offered to them, both my tools and other resources. They have a clear sense of where they're going, and they're ready. They may take other workshops of other other people and well, I maybe think they'll it's contact good. you for the relationship now because you worked with well, them maybe with I the career know. last time, you know. <laughs> yeah, it could be a lot of times. You know, it's so funny because how I came to this, I was a crisis counselor at a rape crisis and domestic violence shelter. I've been a teacher for many years. Um, I've been a volunteer coordinator. All of these things in service. I've been a coach my entire life, but my training had been in counseling and teaching and speaking and writing. And um, when I finally fully stepped into this role eight years ago, it felt like a click, it felt right. The timing was right. Everything that I had done before had led up to that moment. And I just really knew um, with everything else that was going on in the world too, that I was ready. I knew I was needed and I was ready to answer that call to service and I was it's a great background because you can see why maybe some people are staying in the wrong mm -hmm. relationships or they, or anything that's not serving them. Exactly, and I, I really, in hindsight, it's always so much easier in hindsight to see how everything in our lives have led to this moment and how um, we've been given basic training, you know, to do what we do. And um, it takes courage to do it, of course. And um, I'm ready, I'm willing. Well, exciting. Yeah. So, so someone can call you and do you want yes. to your phone number? Yes, I, I actually yeah. coach people in person, but I also coach via Skype, um, by email, by Facebook sometimes, and by phone. And they can reach me at um, Lonnie at copowerment.com, email, 808-447-9747 uh, by phone. Um, they can check out my website at copowerment.com. 
And we just sent out an email with all your upcoming calls. Oh, so. That's so exciting. Yes. yes, and thank you. Thank you. I'm thank so you for honored. coming on. So get potential blind. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Oh my goodness, that was